in the remote jungles of Guatemala. 7,000 feet above the clouds. You just lean back in your hooks, your belt, and just say, man, this, what a great day God's having today planting, you know, painting this picture. And never have I thought I would climb a pull above clouds. Where progress has been light years away. I had no idea that people actually truly lived this way, that it was this hard. This is what we're doing this project for, is for the kids, for the future of this country. Twenty-eight Hoosier linemen challenge gravity, mother nature, and terrain. Offering more than hope, creating more than change, bringing light and power to the people. The spark came straight from the heartland. The belief that one of life's greatest rewards is working hard at work worth doing. But this time, Indiana's rural electric linemen would pay it forward, half a world away, in the frontier zone of western Guatemala. On the 10? All right, I got go 12. In 1935, less than 10% of America's farms had electricity. Then, rural electrification arrived. That same year, Indiana became the first U.S. co-op to bring electric power and turn on the lights in the rural areas of the state. Now, 75 years later, that piece of history comes full circle. In 2012, the international year of the cooperative, Hoosiers Power the World became the largest and one of the toughest NRECA international projects. It is 1,800 miles away in a country with many needs. Two out of three Guatemalans live below the extreme poverty line. Guatemala has the fourth highest chronic malnutrition rate in the world. 70% of children in these mountains are malnourished. Their families eking out a subsistence living, growing coffee and corn in Central America's highest non-volcanic mountain range. Electric power for schools, clinics, homes, businesses has been sporadic, if not non-existent, until now. I'm going to wiggle you a little bit. I'm going to let off on this, okay? No one could have imagined this a year ago including the all-too-real challenges for 28 volunteer linemen and their families. I love you. When we was in Guatemala, it wasn't the perfect world. I guess it's kind of like a mother hen with her chicks, and they were my chicks, and I just, you know, you don't want anything to happen to them. But there's always that unexpected that happens, that you hope that nobody's in harm's way when that unexpected happens. It took a year of planning, organizing half a million dollars of equipment, manpower, and supplies donated by Indiana's 39 rural electric co-ops. It took weeks of training and a day of goodbyes. But climbing a pole in Trafalgar, Indiana is not the same as climbing a pole 7,000 feet above wild, unmapped jungles near the Mexican border. Stringing 1,200 foot spans of wire across gorges. Roger that, neutral top. Setting poles by hand without paved roads or bucket okay, trucks. We're started down, or almost. Can you go up more? That pole got exciting. Uh, it was set shallow. We had a gap on this side, four to five inches. Uh, once we got up on top and it shifted on us, so it got pretty hairy for a minute. 
I, I pray about I just did then. I pray the whole time I go up the pole. Um, maybe it's a little redundant, but nope. hey, I'm just like, it. hey, you know, keep me and him safe and don't let this thing fall. And that's just what I do that helps me. We got each other's back. We watch out for each other. It's just kind of like brothers. Well, that's what this was. They're a band of brothers. But they know nothing is easy here. Everything is a struggle. The terrain's been unbelievable. Your legs feel like spaghetti. All the work takes longer. There are shortages. And working 10-hour days, seven days a week, the Indiana linemen are in a race against time, with twice as much work as they'd anticipated. We continually run out of equipment, run out of supplies. Well, we've had a couple conditions here where the fog, the guy could be on one pole and he couldn't see the guy on the next pole because of the clouds. We're working in the clouds and the elevation. So um, we've had rain daily. Uh, we're working in uh, conditions unlike anything we've ever encountered in any of our lives. I've never once on this trip been disheartened and thought, no, there's no way. It's just throwing the towel, it's just quit and go home. No, never once. They are linemen. So against the odds, they do. They improvise in the field. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. That's what a lineman has to do. Bringing to their work unique skills. I'm not a carpenter. I don't build churches. I don't build schools. But I can build a power line. A passion for what they do. Everybody asks, why would you want to do this? I did it because they didn't have it and I did it to see if I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> Humor. And a positive attitude for the unexpected. If you don't have fun, it's not fun. Wouldn't be worth being in this business. It's kind of exciting when you're on a pole and you can see the lightning flashing around and you're kind of thinking, well, that was close. But I didn't feel anything this time. Uh, that, that nerve was closer and I didn't feel any, oh, I felt that one. <laughs> The linemen are humbled by the Guatemalan villagers. The stuff that they did was brutal with carrying the poles and digging the holes. They did the hard, the hard stuff. And the trust and respect becomes mutual. Actually, we feel very happy because we know that these people have come to actually work. They are hard workers and they, we have supported them a lot because we can see that they work hard. And if it wouldn't have been for the Guatemala people down here helping us, I guarantee you that project would have never got done. 201, they'll tell you, it's about changing lives. I think there's a real strong possibility that we could even uh, extend some of these people's lives in the future. Education maybe can take these kids from, from one area of this country and let them expand their horizons and fulfill a dream. And that's what it's all about. They have only 30 days to defy the odds and accomplish the mission. Stringing 20 miles of wire, electrifying as many as 175 homes, churches, and businesses and bringing power to more than 1,000 people, men, women, and children, who've waited their whole lives for this. In the end, the Hoosier linemen change this little piece of the world just by doing what they do best. We've been waiting 30 years for this. Now we thank God and all of you for making this dream a reality. The power they bring transforms the villages, but the work transforms them. Something that will last with me forever. Seeing them kids underneath that light bulb made it all worthwhile. And see these people work every day uh, for something like this, for just one light, I mean, it's amazing and see their faces and they've never had the power, the electricity like we've had back here. It's just, it's like, man, it is worth it all. It is worth everything, every bug bite I've got, every sliver I've got in my hand, or, um, it is worth it all. They're always gonna have electricity in this area because of the men from Indiana. 
It's putting your thumbprint down in this area. There's something here that just pulls on your heart now that, I don't know, I think it'll be part of me forever. Truthfully, you know, when we stop and take a look at it, God gave us that opportunity to achieve all we achieved. and to see that they were pouring everything that they had into thanking us. It was more special than I ever could have ever imagined. To see that gratitude out of people that have so little. Now the music is quiet, the linemen gone, but the memories are still vivid. Imagine it now, somewhere in Hoya Blanca, or Las Nubes, or Nueva Esperanza. A Guatemalan will use his new training and gear to climb a pole. The women no longer have to walk miles to grind corn, or cook in smoky shacks, or work in the dark. Throughout these savage and beautiful mountains, farmers will earn more to support their families from their coffee bean harvest. Their children will lace up new shoes, or play football, or practice what the linemen taught them. Go ahead, keep going. So now, when darkness falls behind these mountains, the lights come on, and their future shines more clearly, because these linemen helped Hoosiers power the world.